Hi guys, it's Sebastian with Looking, Feeling, Smelling Great. I'm back with another video for you today. Today we're going to go ahead and do my top 10 food fragrances in my collection, so please stay tuned. So oud is a very popular note in fragrances, and I happen to have several, over 10 actually, some cheap and uh, inexpensive versions of oud and some more expensive luxury versions of oud. But we're going to go ahead and start with uh, number 10, and this is my top 10 oud fragrances in my collection. So here goes. Number 10 is one that everybody knows about, but probably not this version, the original version that was launched way back before oud was even a uh, fragrance term or a popular fragrance household term. I'm talking about M7, and this is the M7 Oud Absolute by YSL. Why did I put this in here? So, this I think is a pretty groundbreaking fragrance. Not this version, of course, as I said, the original, but I don't have the original. I've only worn a small decan of it. I never bought it from the bottle. But I still think this is a pretty, uh, you know, worthy uh, of a fragrance to mention and include in this list. It's what kickstarted the Oud craze, I think, back in the early 2000s. It's still going strong now. Everybody still talks about Oud and more Oud fragrances get launched. So this is inexpensive. It's under $100, but still worthy of an Oud fragrance. And this is one you can wear on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a little maybe overwhelming, perhaps, for like office or anything like that. So you might want to go, you know, very, very uh, minimal sprays. But for an everyday kind of a fra uh, Oud fragrance, I think this is definitely one to check out. It's M7 Oud Absolute by YSL, number 10. So number nine is one that is also very popular, but I en ended up putting it here because I don't tend to pull for it much, but I think it's a great, great fragrance. It smells great. Just doesn't perform as great as I want it to. And that is Oud Wood by Tom Ford. I have the flack on here, but um, I, I just think this is a, such a great scent, but for some reason, on me, it's like a four and a half to five hour affair and that's it. But man, I love the way it smells. It's just a really nice, fluffy, airy oud, which is actually a perfect scent for like somebody that wants to wear a scent every day, but doesn't want to think about anything else. They just want to take one fragrance and have only one fragrance. Good luxury, classy fragrance in their collection and keep it with one. So if you're looking for that kind of oud that's not overwhelming, smells very pleasant, very likable, and you know you don't want to think about other ouds start out with oud wood i think it's a great one to start out with if you're going to skip the m7 of course but just keep in mind that on some folks it doesn't last on me it hardly lasts i also happen to have the body spray so i use that along with it so it kind of does last a little longer but still i wish it performed much better i wanted it something that would be a little more potent but overall, as a scent, it's awesome. It's just an awesome, awesome scent. So number nine, Oud Wood. At number eight, we've got Leather Oud by Floris. Now this isn't Honey Oud, but it kind of has the similarities to Honey Oud. And it's definitely not the Leather Oud of Dior, which is also all very animalic with civet note. This is all about leather with Oud. And then it's got this like slight bit of sweetness, something in there, maybe perhaps a touch of amber or something. That sweetens it up a bit. But I love the leather in here, and I love the oud in here. Not overwhelming, but still very pleasant, and really, really love wearing leather oud by Floris. This is a very old, old house out of the UK, Floris. Not much mention about the brand, but definitely worth checking out. And the bottles are very classy, as you can see. So Floris Leather Oud at number eight. At number seven, we've got a very expensive fragrance. This is over $400 now, I think. It's Rose Oud by Killian. 50 ml bottle, what a awesome, awesome. This is one of the better rose oud combinations and I actually ended up putting it at number seven because there's a lot of great releases here to include here. But rose oud gets me lots of compliments. It's a very kind of a creamy, but very potent, intense rose, jammy rose with um, a oud. It's just great stuff. The thing is, this is, when I first got Rose Oud, I was wearing tons of it, and I really loved it. And I was going to events and things like that, and compliments were out of this world with this one. People loved the way this smelled, especially on me, and with a little humidity in the air, and the, 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 the fragrance kind of 
elevates off of you. It, it just was garnering many, many compliments. And that's what I liked about this one, although I'm not pulling for it much anymore, but I need to get back on track and pull for it. And I think it's one of the better Rose and Oud combos ever. So Rose Oud by Killian at number seven. And number six we've got by Killian's Incense Oud. Now I have the little atomizer set with this one. And again, this is again another expensive fragrance. And I don't even know if I should have included this in here because I don't pick up a lot of Oud. It's more incense -y, it's very green. But man, it smells so good. So, 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 so good. It's, I guess there's Oud in there because it's called Incense Oud, but I think Incense Oud and Amber Oud from this collection, the Arabian Nights collection from By Killian, I don't pick up a lot of Oud from it. Although I pick up more Oud from the Incense than the Amber Oud, but again, I don't really like get a dominant kind of an Oud scent. So, so I guess the Oud is in the background, but it's all about a very green incense. Just one of my favorite incense scents, hands down, smells too luxury, like it just screams luxury. But very, very nice. Incense Oud by Killian at number six. So number five, we've got one from Montal, and that is Black Oud. Now this one, what I like about this a little more than the Rose Oud, even though Rose Oud is just to die for, this one has patchouli, and it's a little drier. It's, it's actually much drier than the Rose Oud. But there are several fragrances that are very similar to this Black Oud, and I happen to like Black Oud. There was one from and then there's also one from Tiziana Terenzi, the kind of the rose and oud combo. They're very, very similar to me. And I happen to go with the Montal Black Oud. And performance is just amazing on this one. Just long, long lasting. It's like an all day kind of an affair with this one. You spray it in the morning and you're gonna smell it most likely the following day because it's really a potent fragrance. And that's what I like about the Black Oud. If you like Rose and Oud with a little patchouli combo, this is the one to check out. So, Black Oud at number five. And the next one is actually a tie of two different scents, even though I'm not including three and four, this is just number four. So we've got Oud Palau from Diptyque. It's kind of a very dirty Oud. And then we've also got a tied with Oud Isfahan with Rose. Now they have similarities, but when you smell Oud Palau, it's a little dirtier at the front, and then when you wear it, it becomes more rosy. But this Oud Isfahan is rosy at the top, and it kind of becomes a little animalic, woody, woody as it dries down. So to me, they're very similar. I think if you're looking for something a little more potent or more intense than the Oud Isfahan, you might want to think about this one, but this does have more intensity. This is actually $145 or $150 for a 50 mil. This is $300 for they might have actually even raised the prices by now. 300 for 250 mil. But this one doesn't last as long on me as this one does. When I first bought Udas Baham like three years ago, it did perform much better than it does now. And I've heard from folks that the reformulation is sucking and it's not lasting as long. But if you're looking for something similar, check out Oud Palau by Diptyque. Very, very similar fragrances. Both are number four. At number three, we've got one from the house of Byredo and that is Accord Oud. What I like about this one is the fact that it's bright and shiny, but sparkly, kind of effervescent, kind of also reminds me of their other fragrance pulp, but it's not exactly what that is, because it has a little bit of fruitiness, and I'm picking up the fruitiness from pulp in here. But this is all oud. This does last a long time, but if you like your oud to be a little more airy, or maybe perhaps a little transparent or translucent, not so dense, this is the one to go for. I think it's a really, really nice one. I like Accord Oud more than their other fragrance called Oud de Mortel. I don't know, something about this one resonates with me more and I absolutely love this one. So Accord Oud at number three. Check it out if you haven't yet. Number two, it's a tie again and we've got Floris Honey Oud and Montal Honey Oud. So what makes them different? I actually really like Honey Oud by Floris a lot more than Montal's Honey Oud. But Montal's Honey Oud does last a bit longer than Honey Oud by Floris. Now, Montal's Honey Oud is also not so honey to me, on me. It's more Oud, like really heavy Oud. Then we get more honey with this one. So I'm kind of more drawn to the Floris one because it's a little sweeter and it tones down that denseness from the, the Oud note in here. But if I had, you know, if I had a toss up, 
I would go with the honey oud, but then from Flores, but then again, honey oud from Montal is also really great. If I want more oud versus honey. The other cool thing is you can layer the two together and see what happens. I haven't really done that yet, but I'm going to be trying it very, very soon. I think it'll be a great combo to begin with. So anyway, honey oud, Flores, honey oud, Montal at number two. And last but not least at number one, it's Aqua de Parma Colonia Intensa Oud. Now this one actually is such a great release for me. It's my favorite one from their darker bottle collection, the more intense fragrances, which also includes leather, the uh, amber or ombra, and then the quercia. Quercia I did not like at all. It just kind of was like wet dish rag. It smelled really funky. But the Oud is just really a really nice one, really intense. It is cologne concentration, but it is uh, really intensified. So it lasts a long, long time, like all day for me. And I like the fact that it's, it's leathery. It's a leathery oud. And it's unique to be coming from a, a brand that's known for more freshy fragrances. Um, I really like this one, and it's definitely my number one oud, and I really pull for it frequently as much as I can. It's just a great, great release, and uh, one I'll cherish for a long time and enjoy wearing when it's really cool and uh, cold outside. So at number one, it's Aqua de Parma's Colonia Intensa Oud. All right, guys, let me know what you think of this list of oud fragrances. Did I miss anything? Now, I do have a few others in my collection I did not want to include because I don't pull for them much, like the Amber Oud, the Pure Oud, from Achille, both from Killian, also Musk Oud from Killian. I love that brand in the Oud, the Arabian Nights collection. But those I don't pull for much. And there's maybe a few other ouds in my collection, but this is pretty much the gist of it. I also have tobacco oud from uh, Tom Ford that I didn't include here either. So if I missed anything, let me know. Let me know what I should acquire next time when I put together this list. Also, please follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. There's a subscribe button at the top, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.